whole bunch of stuff coming up, uh, not the least of which involves your pocketbook. You're, are you ready for this? We're going to talk money here, uh, faith in finance. And Drew Blasick is with us. Last week uh, we uh, we took the day off, so we didn't get yeah. we didn't get the visit. Boy, you Drew. talk about a more. I don't know that there's a more appropriate time to talk about money and how we spend our money and what we do with our money. Uh, then as we begin to approach the Christmas, uh, Christmas season. Yeah. Because a lot of people are struggling with what Absolutely. do they do? What's the expectation? And boy, has the expectation been, um, kind of really created in hyper sense here in our country. I remember just real quickly running, um, jewelry, com- jewelry stores back when I was a young man. And it always occurred to me, I thought, our entire economy is built on Christmas, on the birth of Jesus. And whether we have a good Christmas or not dictates whether we have a good economy or not. Mm. Yeah. From a, from a retail perspective, we've so secularized the uh, holiday yeah. that it has become the very thing that our economy is built on. Well, they have indexes that show how much uh, how great shopping is going during the Christmas season. Yeah, every day. And that's like, how they judge. Did it go? The economy. Did it go well today? Oh my goodness, it's a disaster. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, it's just crazy that it's it's uh, become that that significant. Now, uh, last time, uh, let's see, where you left off last time you were here uh, was, a, I think, an encyclical that you were talking about. Yeah, so we talked about, uh, first of all, uh, good morning. I good morning, guys, uh, Yesterday, I you, saw brother. you guys enjoying yeah. the breakfast. It yeah. looked really good. Two helpings. Too. Okay, Drew, you know how to say that on the air. I didn't yeah, know how you guys seconds. were able yeah, to talk. Like, yeah. You guys are just chowing down. It's like a buffet over there. Yeah, that's right. That's crazy. Right. A trough set up in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if you guys were talking. But. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we talked about Rainham Navarum. So yeah. I kind of want to, this has been a month since we talked about it, because yeah, I kind of want right. to recap what we uh, went over. Uh, a couple things. We try to uh, define capitalism, mm. and it's very difficult to define capitalism. We have to ask what the person views capitalism as because someone might say it's free markets. Okay, right. everyone agrees. Um, for our sake, what we're saying is that capitalism is the preeminence of capital above labor. That mm. capital, money, power, the one who owns the property has the preeminence over labor. Um, and that's what – I would say these Catholic writings are, they're not writing about free markets. I mean, every Catholic would agree with that. You need mm-hmm. a free, you need an open market. Mm-hmm. But, um, we talked about Heinrich Pesch. He was the, uh, utmost, uh, most influential, I'll say, economists in the Catholic world that influenced popes to write the, um, cause what you had going on, you had the change of Catholic Europe going from serfdom. You had it, uh, changing from, an individual took care of his family off a of sustenance. So right. they, they took, they, they produced off the land and they, they paid, uh, uh, the Lord or of the land a certain amount of stuff that they produced. Mm-hmm. And then you had the implementation of usury that mm-hmm. we talked about before in the show in the 1500s. And then it was that connection between the capital, the one who, uh, the Lords were realizing if we started, uh, businesses and then the um, actual uh, politicians were creating taxes for the mm. poor, which which forced the poor they had to make uh, money and able to pay the taxes. Right, mm. and sometimes they didn't have enough money, so they had to go into debt. And then you had the money lenders, and then that was a usury. They lost the property, and they became and, and what the uh, they Catholic became servants of, themselves, or what slaves. referred to then they became slaves, slaves right. in that yeah. respect. Uh, so we defined it. So I'm just going to recap real quick, and then we'll really get into it maybe next week, uh, what it says. State-sponsored uh, – the definition he uses is state-sponsored usury mm. for capitalism in this regard. And again, we're not talking about free markets. We're just talking about the preeminence of capital over labor. Uh, we talked about systematic appropriation of all surplus value. And what mm. is uh, what is that? That's if you take wheat – and then you create flour, and then you create bread. Right. Mm-hmm. The only value you get out of it is you're inputting labor. Labor is a source of all value in the Catholic mm-hmm. uh, approach. So we look at labor as very important, uh, and it's very important not just for that, but to sort of, um, to support the family. Right, and then add value to the individual who's providing that labor. Exactly. Right. So, a couple things. Just want to uh, because we have a few minutes here. Um, About a minute. <laughs> okay, let me just bring this up. This goes uh, fast, yeah. This goes really fast. So it is no easy matter, this is uh, coming from the cyclical, to define the relative rights and mutual duties of the rich and the poor, of capital and labor. And the danger lies in this, that the crafty agitators are intent on making use of these differences of opinion to pervert men's judgments and to stir up the people 
to revolt. So what's mm-hmm. talking about, you had that massive change in Europe where the preeminence of capital, and then you had the socialists and the Marxists were coming in, and they're trying to agitate the people. And they're showing, hey, this was injustice due to you. Right. right? But instead, the Marxist view was the revolt of the Catholic Church utterly, um, outright rejects, mm. is that they wanted no private property. Right. No one owns mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. And then in this encyclical, it's going to talk about the importance of private property, how individuals should own land and take care of themselves. And we'll get into that, I think, next week. Yeah, yeah and what, the name of the encyclical, again, in case anybody wants to look it up. Rerinum Navarum. Let me ask you this real quickly. Are you willing, we should sit down and do a, a full disclosure of this thing, a program on it, and then we can hit the highlights each yeah. Friday, but, but, uh, really point people to a more exhaustive conversation about it. You guys pay me the big bucks. I'm yeah. willing to come anytime. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll pay exactly for that what we pay you for this. And so, uh, yeah. yeah I know you're on with Pat Odie Murray a couple of times, uh, but it's been a while. So yeah, good. that'd be great. All right. We look forward to next Friday when I will ask you this question. Is the church following these principles in its own finances? Wow, let's leave yeah. that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> next right. week. we'll pick that up next Friday. You got a week to figure the, the word to go on that one, Drew. Yeah. Drew Blasek, thank you so much for our faith and finance segment this morning. Thank you. <laughs>